Hello friends, uh, welcome to follow up my lit code notes. Uh, in this video, I'm going to look at problem 2702, minimum operations to make numbers non-positive. Uh, this problem is a newly appeared problem for today. So in this video, I'm going to explain a solution based on binary search. So this problem is marked uh, hot in lit code. Actually, it's sort of a routine application of binary search. Uh, here, we are given a zero indexed integer array called nums and two integers x and y. So here, x is greater than y, right? So in one operation, we must choose an index i such that i is inbound and we perform the following operation. So we decrement the chosen number at index i by x and then we decrement all the values by y at all indices except the ith node, or ith one. So we are required to return the minimum number of operations to make all the integers in nums less than or equal to zero. So here we have two examples. Um, uh, in the first one, uh, so the output is three. So here is a detailed explanation, so which you can digest. So example two is very special because here x is two and y is one. So if we choose index one, then uh, we increment, uh, we decrement this number by two, we get zero. And then y is also one and the other two numbers uh, happen to be one. So we can make all the numbers zero by one operation. So the output is one here. So the additional assumptions for the problem are the following. First, the length of the list nums is bounded above by 10 to the power 5. So this is a decent large number. And uh, the second one is on the range of elements in the list. So it's bounded above by 10 to the power 9. And here, x is greater than y. And uh, both are in between 1 and 10 to the power 9. So with that said, basically, we are ready to explain the main idea. So here, I'm going to use a um, binary search. Uh, so the basic uh, architecture or the big, big picture is the following. Um, uh, first, I'm going to define a Boolean function to enable order or monotonicity. So here I'm going to call this function, let's see, can finish. So it accepts uh, a key. So key is an integer. So basically, given x and y, we want to check if we can uh, finish the task. In other words, make all the integers in nums less than or equal to zero by key operations, right? And then the second step is to uh, find the minimum key, minimum such key, such that uh, can finish uh, key x, y is true, right? In other words, so this key is the minimal one we are looking at, right? So this is the, exactly the problem transformation. So overall, the main logic is encoded in the can finish function. So um, next, uh, we are sort of ready to write the code. But before we do that, let me give one point. So here, uh, because uh, y, so here, let's see, uh, x is greater than y, right? So I want to um, paraphrase or rephrase the operation. So we can in let uh, delta equals the difference, that is x minus y. So the operation allowed in this problem actually is equivalent to the following, right? So the operation in the problem so is equal to, so we decrement all the elements in nums by uh, y, right? Because y is the smallest one. And then uh, we pick one, pick one in the result and uh, decrement it by delta, right? So that's actually equivalent, right? So this way of um, thought actually help us to uh, encode information to the can finish function. 
So with that said, basically we are ready to write this code. So in between, we are going to implement this function and explain some details for doing binary search. So first, I'm going to write the function. So the can finish function define boolean function. So here, let me define can finish. So here we accept a key and x, y, x and y is as uh, are as in the here x and y. So basically, we want to check if we can finish the task um, by key operations. So first, let let me introduce this delta. So the delta will be x minus y, right? By assumption, this delta will be greater than zero. And then first, you know, we can um, do key operations of and de and decrements. So for for atom, so we minus k times uh, y for atom in uh, norms, because we we can always each operation we need to decrement. We can decrement all the numbers by y, right? And then we f uh, we want to check it for the resulted aux list. We see there are some might be zero or negative. Some might be still positive. We want to see if we can make them uh, non-positive uh, by key operations. So this is actually very uh, straightforward. Let me count the operations. So we initialize it as zero. Then we just need a for loop. So for to uh, scan the list. So if y is less than or equal to zero, so we do nothing, right? And then if y is greater than zero, so we need to make it um, negative or non-positive, more precisely. So the number operation needed is nothing but the seal, right? Mass seal. So basically, this is the result. This is the number. So we need uh, to each time we can decrement it by delta, right? So then this is the quotient. We need to use a seal. For example, we have uh, three, and then the delta is two. We need two operations, right? We need to use up two. So we use seal here, and then we can also make uh, add a early stopping. So if n operations. Um, is greater than k. So in this case, uh, we cannot finish in all the, the total task. So we're going to return false. And uh, then if uh, after the for loop, nothing has returned, so we're going to return true. In other words, we can use the key operations to make all the numbers non-positive. So this can finish function actually encodes the main problem logic here. So if you still uh, you are still confusing about the logic, so you need uh, it. It might be wise to look at here this line, and also look at this uh, coding again. So this is the first step. So now let's look at the binary search paradigm. So in this, basically, uh, we want to find a mean k such that uh, can finish uh, k x and y is true. So for doing this properly, we need to pay attention to several things. First, the search bound or search space. Second, uh, the shrinkage pattern. And thirdly, the return. So first, we can um, in initialize low and high. So low, is the lower bound is would be um, zero, right? So then a high, actually, we can choose a large, uh, very large one. But the, on this problem, um, economic one will be, so we choose a max, right? So if we use a smaller uh, decrement, so let's be uh, y, right? And then, yeah, we can use this uh, ceiling, right? Or mass uh, seal. And then, uh, for safety, let's add a one. So you can add a two or three. It doesn't matter. So you cannot uh, make it uh, in at least this the bound upper bound. So you know, if we choose a larger one, it means that the bound is not very tight. So with that done, basically well, let's do the binary search. So well low, less than high. So here I'm writing strictly less, and then the mid. So I'm going to from low and then use this shrinkage, low minus high, 
In other words, so we start from lower and go to up here. Then what we want to check is if can finish. So given this k, uh, this middle, and x, y, if this is true, it means that using this number of operations, we can finish the task. And then we can reset high to be mid. Notice that this high, if we do this set, so high is, uh, if we put high into can finish, it returns true. So this is an important point for considering the return. So if this is not true, so we want to set low to be mid plus one. So if you would examine this pattern, so at the point high, so it will always make can finish true. So this is the, exactly what we want to return. So we are going to return um, high for this problem. So um, sometimes for some problems, if you uh, return low, it happens low and high are the same. But here, return high is the right one. So here, let me emphasize the three points. So this is the search space, and this is the shrinkage, right? And this is the return, so the three ingredients. So with that done, basically, we can first do a test. So here, uh, k is not defined, uh, not k, here is y, right? So let's test. Yeah, it passes one example. Now let's look at the generic case. Yeah, it passes all the generic cases. So with that said, I guess that's about it for this specific problem. So here, let's take notes for the binary search pattern. So typically for such problems, we can first define a Boolean function to enable uh, binary search. In other words, we produce order or monotonicity uh, in mathematical language. And then we transform the problem into a optimization problem either minimization or maximization. And then uh, we do binary search. So when we do binary search, we need to pay attention to three ingredients. Uh, one is searching range uh, or searching space. And the second is the uh, shrinkage pattern. And the third one is the return. So with that said, basically that's about it for this video. Thank you.